Hello and welcome back to our Bandit Lord Challenge. And, uh, well, yeah, hmm, yes, indeed. I'm not sure if it is that much of a challenge right now because we do have a lot of money, as someone actually mentioned, you know, the smithing, you know, yeah, yeah, that does, that, let's see now, that's the thing. That's the reason <laughs> why I stopped a long time ago. I think it was in version, what was it now? Version 1.2. Well, 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 it's not one point, but it was like 0 0.7 or something like that. I think something like that where I stopped just completely doing smithing at all. There was one series where I focused on doing smithing only. That was really, really fun. And uh, then they obviously changed the whole way that smithing works. Obviously, you know, back then it was really broken. Now it's actually not so bad, you know, it's actually all right. You've got to do quite a lot of work to be able to get two-handed swords and, well, basically anything to be worth the time invested. And bear in mind, here's the thing, bear in mind, as I, as I already explained, I do have energy disabled. The reason why I have energy disabled is so that I don't have to spend a lot of time on screen doing the, uh, the little clicky, you know, doing the little clicky stuff, you know, we don't really want to just sit there, at least if it's not a stream, all right, if it's not a stream and I'm not talking to you directly, then, you know, it it's a little bit, eh, you know, it's not that engaging and not that fun. So obviously me waiting for my stamina to come back, that's just going to be kind of yeah, a little bit lackluster. So that's the reason why I have the energy disabled, of course, not for any other reason. It's actually kind of funny that people think still that I do stuff to become OP or to become so powerful that nothing can actually rival us because that's not what I'm about, actually. That's, that's what's really funny because I'm not actually trying to do that. I am trying to become strong, of course. I mean, <laughs> isn't that the point of the game? That is the point of the game. But what I'm trying to say is that I'm not actually someone that is going to try to become the most OP thing in the world. I'm just trying to do my best to conquer some things, have some fun, and then go on from there. That's pretty, you know me, you know, if you've, if you've watched me for a while, you'll know that's not what I'm about. I'm, I'm much more about having fun. And if that thing is fun, I'll do it, whatever it is. You know, if it's, if it's something that actually does turn out to be way too overpowered then i might just be like hey you know what I'm, i might not do that as much even though it is fun you know so for example you know i've got a bunch of thrown weapons right here and you can see here i'm actually killing huge amounts of enemies right now but obviously that's the thing thrown weapons for me are just purely for the fact of seeing the rag dolls that's it you know if i wanted to be op or more efficient <laughs> <laughs> I'd be using a bow right now. I'd be using a bow in no time at all because that is just an absolutely insane weapon. If you can get the noble bow, you are literally just going to be having a whale of a time. You're going to have an, an amazing time there. And actually, don't even get me started actually because the ragdoll effects of the bow are actually pretty good, surprisingly enough. Yeah, they are actually pretty good. So anyone that is into ragdolls like I am, you know, you can literally just have a hilarious time watching the ragdolls go crazy if you have a decent amount of skill in bows. And uh, as long as you have a, a decent weapon that actually does good damage, and I'm obviously not talking about, you know, a hunting bow here. I'm talking a literal, you know, noble bow. If you have a noble bow, you're going to have a wonderful time just, you know, shooting off those arrows, and then you're going to see just how just how hilarious it can actually get so yeah anyway as i say i'm not really someone that is doing things solely for the purpose of feeling powerful even though that is obviously the point of the game you know you are trying to build yourself up from zero and becoming something much stronger and uh, as i've also said the vassalage thing, all right, the vassalage thing, that is actually not something that we are going to be remaining. I'm not going to, I mean, I, I think I've already kind of demonstrated that fact by leaving the Batanians and then uh, basically backstabbing them pretty much by stealing their thieves and pretty much just, you know, faction hopping over. We know how, how faction hoppers are. I'm not a big fan of faction hoppers at all when the AI does it. 
But of course, we're doing that because we're a bandit. We're doing the, you know, we're doing the little backstabbery things going on there. And I think that's pretty fun. But as I say to you, we're not going to be staying a vassal for the entirety of the series. Obviously, that's just not what we're all about. What we're about is opportunistic behavior. So if we see something that is currently going on that we're thinking, hey, you know what, maybe I can get a better deal over here, then I'm going to go over there and I'm going to get that better deal. You know what I mean? It's kind of like going shopping, you know, you go shopping and you think to yourself, oh, wait a minute, there's this toaster over here that's, you know, I don't know, $20 or, you know, your regional equivalent. And you think to yourself, hmm, maybe I can get that cheaper elsewhere. And that's the kind of thing that we did with the Batanians and the and the uh, Northern Empire right here. You know, obviously we, <laughs> if, if you can liken them to toasters, eh? Yeah, we're going to liken them to toasters now. I don't know what, what's up with me and bread analogies. I don't know, Some, something, something weird going on there, but. I don't know, bread's kind of cool, right? Bread's kind of cool. Toasting bread is kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, we're going to give away a bunch of these prisoners. Look at this, 530 strength. I'm basically trying to build up the strength of the forest bandits right now. That's actually what I was attempting to do. As you can see, my criminal rating has skyrocketed all the way into 70s here. We, we now have 72 in actual fact. And we can even give away some stuff if we want to too. Now, I'm not sure whether I should really do that. I think I will, probably. Let's just give away a couple of things. Obviously, some of this stuff would be probably pretty good to uh, to smelt and stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, a anyway, as I say, about the whole smithing thing, I will continue to smith, but maybe we're going to rein it back a little bit. We're, we're just going to... We're going to continue to do some smithing sometimes. But I'm thinking maybe what we'll do is we'll try to create weapons for our own forces. Hilariously enough, though, I actually feel as though this... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Where's my civilian sword? There it is. The Highland Broad Blade. Apparently, someone told me that this is the second best sword in the game. And I'm actually, I'm actually so, so surprised that I was able to get lucky enough to get this. Um, but that actually kind of brings me to the next point. Maybe I should just get a bunch of these for my companions and then just give them that, you know. So in other words, I, I would just need to go into the marketplace, try and find these Highland Broad Blades, and then we're going to have a wonderful time. As you can see, look at this. There's six of them. And they're, they're, they're literally going to be 20,000 every single one. That actually seems like a pretty good deal. Obviously, 20,000 is about the same price as the two-handed sword that I created previously. So... All things, you know, all things considered, I could technically do a one-for-one -one swap for this stuff. So I'm thinking maybe we'll just do that. So I have, uh, what is it now, three companions with me right now. So I'm going to buy three of these. And we're going to trade that with three of these. There's a little bit of extra cash here as well. So we might as well just get a little bit of an extra there. And then we're just going to equip our forces. Uh, oh, wait a minute. They don't like this? Is this the best sword in the game? <laughs> is this the best sword in the game now? Because I literally just spent 80,000 on, on, well, I mean, maybe not on nothing, but uh, I'm actually going to ask you right now, is this the best sword in the game? I, I don't know. I mean, I would like to give them the, uh, the new swords as their civilian selves anyway, so they can actually use that. There we go. Use that. Use that. There we are. Okay, perfect, perfect. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, yeah. I have also given the various banners as well to the couple of people that we have right here. So you can see here, Yagada has decreasing morale shock. We have Shala here who has increased damage against mounted troops. And we have Dareem here who has basically nothing, but we can actually give him one because I actually just looted one, hilarious enough. There's also one here which also increases troop movement speed. Personally, for me, I'd love to see the banners actually do more than this. I'm not talking about you know, the point that I was trying to make in a previous series where I wanted more of an RPG benefit for this kind of stuff. Because obviously, just bear in mind that every single little bit of this uh, is going to benefit every single troop that you have in your army. So, of course, that makes a pretty significant difference. However, I'd like to see it do other things. So, I'd like to see it do other things like, I don't know, 
provide health region. <laughs> That's obviously not going to happen. But what about if... Um, I don't know. What about if it... I, 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 I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's going into kind of like more uh, low fantasy territory if I say stuff like that, where it's like, oh yeah, you should, you, know, you should give this banner to your troops and then they'll magically regenerate their HP. No, that's obviously not what I'm talking about, but something along those lines, but not that, you know what I mean? Something a little bit more unique than just this thing has been increased by a flat value. You know, that kind of thing I'm talking about. Anyway, there we go. We've got 100 morale right now, which is actually super nice, surprisingly enough. And I think we've got that mostly due to the fact that we have a significant amount of variety in regards to our foodstuffs. So I'm very happy with that. Anyway, I have 242 in charm right now. I'd like to ideally get to 275, but that might be a little bit difficult. I'm not sure. Uh, what I would like to do, though, is I would actually like to attack this um, this caravan. That is actually Pelasaur, hilariously enough. I'm, I'm not sure whether that's a coincidence or not. But anyway, I would like to attack this caravan for the pure reason that I'd like to get a little bit more roguery skill. As I, as I showed you before, the method of leveling roguery skill is, in my opinion at least, very, very cool. And I'd love to be able to utilize that just that little bit more. Uh... There we go. He's actually heading back now. Wonderful. Okay. So I'm interested in trading. What kind of things do you have, sir? Yes, very nice. Okay. So we're just going to give him a bunch of these. And that's basically all we're going to give him. There's nothing really else that I need to do. I technically could buy some Sumter horses here, which I think I will do. I'll just buy a bunch from him. And uh, we could also buy some other things from him as well. And I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. There we go. All right, wonderful. So, hand over your goods or die. There we go. Yeah, so we're basically just going to be attacking him. We're obviously declaring war against the Vlandians here. This is obviously going to make Lucon. I think Lucon... Is, is Lucon not annoyed at me right now? I'm actually a little bit worried about this. Or I'm actually kind of thinking that, well, why is he not annoyed at me? He should be annoyed at me, but he's apparently not. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Okay. All right. <laughs> I guess that's all right. I mean, it very much depends. The Northern Empire is actually in a pretty good situation right now. They're getting mm, pretty decent tributes from a variety of different sources as well. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe they're actually doing much better than I thought. And then we can, well, kind of sustain that. We can kind of sustain that particular war effort. Maybe we're going to see something like that. Anyway, just going to try and do a couple of little bit of hits against the enemy's cavalry here. Oh, yeah, you go slidey, sir. You go slidey across the ground. Very nice. Can I get some more, please? Can I get some more of these hits? Nice. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's wonderful. Love it. Absolutely love that. As I say, ragdolls are just the best with the thrown weapons. And they are going to get even better as I get more skills. So that's why I'm trying to trying to hit as many people as possible with these things. <laughs> or I can hit my own troops. Actually, hilariously enough, I think someone I, uh, I think someone told me that one time that hitting your own troops does give you a experience or doesn't. See, now I forget. Now, now I've completely forgotten whether you said that it does or doesn't give you experience. Because if it does, then that's... Mm, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about it a little bit. Just a little. I mean, I do that anyway most of the time. But I kind of thought it might be the same as using, uh, using a ranged attack against a horse or something like that. Might not allow you to actually do anything in regards to skill ups and things. But I, I don't really know. Yeah, so we're just going to try and use my mace here. Actually, I love this mace, to be honest. I think this mace is absolutely amazing. Although, to be fair, you could, as I said before, you could use the sledgehammer. And the sledgehammer, in my opinion, is actually... Mm, it's not a bad weapon, surprisingly enough. I did use it in the stream series, and I was very much enjoying it. I actually thought to myself, yeah, this is actually a viable weapon. Because I asked the chat at the time and I said hey shall we use this sledgehammer and everyone was like yeah <laughs> you should use it because it's a it's a hilarious weapon because when you're running around with it on horseback and you're swinging it it just goes bonk you know it has that really really 
satisfying but hilarious at the same time sound effect associated with it and that is the kind of thing that you want isn't it you literally want one of these things because you just think to yourself wow look at this you know you're you're using this massive sledgehammer that is actually not that massive because if you look at it you can see that the head of the mallet it, it actually l literally looks a little bit more like a mallet than it does an actual sledgehammer which is pretty funny. A mallet as in, you know, the thing that you use to play croquet with, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, we're just going to be taking all of this, as you might expect. And uh, yeah, Clan de Maroc is now holding a stronger grudge against us, which I don't really care about too much. We've got another hideout here of forest bandits, which is actually amazing. Super, super pleased that we were able to find this. This actually provides me with better scheme percentages now in this particular area too. So I'm very happy about that. We can also give these prisoners to the forest bandits. Look at this, 2,800 right here. And let me just take a quick look at my roguery skill. Mm, yes, unfortunate, unfortunate. Okay, so yeah, as I said before, probably going to need to... Mm, I probably would have needed to trade more swords than just five to be able to gain more roguery skill but for me personally i think 296 is perfectly fine obviously if you want to go for a higher than that then you can obviously do that but uh the best way that i have seen to do this strategy is to be extremely low in your roguery skill and be extremely high in your smithing skill this was actually the original reason why I wanted to level up smithing by the way as well because I wanted to level up smithing not to make money or anything like that but to actually just level my roguery skill because inevitably roguery is actually going to be the way that will make money in the end not smithing and that's what I've always said I've always said to you especially in a variety of different series actually so far is that is that I think roguery is the secret OP um, skill tree. And if this, is, if this is your first time hearing me say that, then yeah, you can pick your jaw up off the floor. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to gasp or anything like that. You, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm obviously just kidding. Anyway, the point is, it's actually amazing. It is really, really good. Because let's face it, later on down the line, let's just say you're playing vanilla Bannerlord, which, you know, uh, well, quite a few people are going to be because they're playing on console or something like that, right? So they have no mods, nothing at all like that. I'm actually going to go into the smithy just now because I want to smelt some stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, the point is, imagine you're doing that and you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, I don't have the Forbury mod. I don't have any of these other mods that can, you know, customize my game experience in any way. So what am I going to do instead? Well, I'm going to try and level my roguery skill or I'm going to try and level my smithing skill or something like that and you really really want to get your roguery skill high as possible if you can get that as high as possible and then what are you going to be doing late game you could you're just going to be fighting you're just going to be fighting vassals and you know what the, the most amazing thing about that is when you're fighting vassals roguery is the thing you want Oh yes, roguery is the thing you want because what it's going to do is it will literally do what it, it will do everything for you basically. It will do everything for you. It will give you as many um as much loot as you can carry and then some and then it's also on top of that going to give you enough money so much money, in fact, that the marketplaces in and around Calradia will actually run out. Any single one you go to will run out of, of cash, and they won't have money any further. Which is really, really funny, actually, when that happens. But that's what I'm talking about. You can do that without smithing skill, but the only thing that I say uh, is, you know, you can use smithing skill just to level up the roguery skill, you know? That's the thing. That's the reason why I wanted to do that initially. Because um, initially, I thought to myself, okay, what's the easiest way for me to level up, uh, you know, some, some roguery skill? And then I found out about this particular strategy, you know, using the whole smithing thing and the, and the caravan and all that stuff. 
And I thought, okay, let's try it out, you know, because I was actually really psyched for it. I thought to myself, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, this is such a such a cool strategy to use. And as I say, if you want to do it yourself, I would highly recommend doing it before you reach max roguery skill. So for me, I actually did it a bit wrong because I was doing it when I was at, I think, 190 or something like that. And that's, that's okay, you know, that's fine. But the best way that you can do it is if you want to go from, I don't know, like 100 roguery skill all the way up to 300 or even more than that, it's highly recommended to max out your cunning. Well, get as much cunning as possible. So, you know, get seven in cunning or six or, you know, eight if, if you know, ideally you want to get eight. And then you would have five focus points in roguery as well. So that maxes out your learning rate, obviously. That, well, tr just try to max out your learning rate as much as you can. And then you do the whole strategy about, you know, you make re you know, your most expensive weapon that you can. So you make that at the smithy and you make a huge amount of them. So let's say you make, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 swords, if you can, if you can do that. You know, that's obviously going to be really, really difficult to do. Um, without obviously running out of, um, you know, running out of materials and, and so on and so forth. It's going to be pretty, uh, pretty harsh on the whole, you know, cost effective nature of the whole thing. But, you know, it's worth it. And so then you go over to the caravan and you go like, hey, uh, I'd like to uh, trade with you, sir. And then you trade with the guy and then he goes, okay, well, thank you very much for your business. And then you say, well, not so fast. It's time for us to do another kind of business. And then you murder him. And you take back your stuff. And that's the reason why you want to try and make things as, you know, valuable as possible. Because you are actually looting that amount of money. And the amount of roguery that you gain is determined by the amount of profit or the value of the gear that you are looting. So in other words, you know, if you've just looted the stuff that you made and they're costing, I don't know, 20,000, 25,000, 30,000, something like that each one yeah you're gonna be doing you know 200,000 300,000 in dinars just from loot alone and that is going to propel your roguery skill from 100 or whatever it is all the way up to at least I don't know at least 250 it should be much more than that I, th I think at least but who knows because I am playing a modded version of the game so I'm not entirely sure how well that's going to work without any mods at all but I just thought I would let you know about it, nevertheless. Anyway, 2,000, oh, only 2,900. I really want to do some more. Okay, wait a minute. We've got some vassals nearby. Let's see what we can do about these guys. All right, all right. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I actually have a couple of people that leveled up. Oh, hilariously enough, Shala leveled up his crossbow skill. Can you believe it? All right, we're going to go for Fletcher right there. That's going to give him a couple more bolts to use. That's going to be kind of nice. Uh, let's take a look at tactic skill right here. Uh, Sotheris Air. That doesn't really matter, unfortunately, for him. And he actually has a focus point. So I'm going to be specking that into tactics because he is, as far as I'm aware, an enforcer in one of our towns. So I'd like to try and make that happen. And I really want Yagata, Yagata to actually level up because she has zero in bow skill so it would be really really nice if we could actually get her a focus point or two in that but as you can see she's actually almost leveled up but the thing is i need i kind of need to i, I don't know i kind of need to focus her on medicine as much as possible because she is our only medic so i don't know i don't know whether i can actually afford to focus on other things with her unfortunately anyway let's just take a quick look who else is there that needs to level up this guy all right here we go uh, well mounted, I guess, and he's got a focus point. What do we want to spec him in? Well, it's probably going to be roguery. It's probably going to be roguery because he seems, I think he is a paymaster somewhere or he's doing something in regards to that. And there is Mr. Caladog. I would like to actually fight him if at all possible. So let me see if I can actually catch up to him. Oh no, he's trying to bait me, isn't he? He's trying to bait me into his friends over there. Yes, indeed. Look at that. Did you see that? Yes. You could see that he was trying to do that, couldn't you? Okay, so wait a minute. Hmm. Request nearby bandits. There we go. Okay, hello there. 
I have 23 forest bandits. Let's let's converge on him. Converge. Well, here we are. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh yes, they are actually joining me. Okay. Whew. I was a bit worried there for a second. I thought to myself, wait a minute, they haven't been added. Oh no. But yeah, there we go. Okay, add followers to my party. Yeah, we're just gonna add all of these guys. And there we go. Okay, so now they are all in my party, which is amazing. And now we can head straight on in. I can actually vote for this, but this is absolutely pointless for me because I don't have any influence, of course, because my criminal rating is just so bad. And uh, that's the reason why, obviously, becoming a vassal is not really that necessary or important as a bandit. But the only reason why I wanted to do it is for leadership because, well... The point is, the reason why I actually went for leadership, I, I don't know whether I actually explained this beforehand, but the, the whole thought process behind doing leadership was to get veterans respect so that what we could do is eventually we would be able to gain units from bandits all the way from tier two bandits or even tier one bandits. And we would hopefully then be able to level those up into Batanian Fian champions or the... Uh, the uh, Drusnik uh, cavalry from the Sturgeons or, uh, you know, basically any of the noble units. Because from a realistic standpoint, what's actually going to happen in this situation? Because if you're a band of, a band of looters and bandits and, and so on and so forth and scoundrels, eventually your men are going to level up aren't they? They're going to level up and they're going to become better than what they were before. And I'm not talking, uh, obviously, realistically, I'm talking about, you know, gaining experience here. I'm, I'm talking about them gaining actual real world skills. So, for example, as I say, you know, soldiers and so on and so forth, let's say, let's say that, you know, you're way back in these times, in medieval times. And uh, let's say that you're, I don't know, uh, your friend is is this guy who was living on the street, you know, ever since he was a young child, and he was enlisted. He, you know, he got enlisted in someone's army or whatever from his village, uh, you know, in, in terms of Bannerlord, you know, and uh, and then all of a sudden, a few years pass by, right? A few years pass by, and then you realize, whoa, this guy is no longer this. Uh, this little scoundrel that was running around the streets, you know, he's no longer that person and he has now become this combat veteran of Immense skill and strength and that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about with the whole, you know leveling the bandits up into Noble units because it takes them a long time to do that and veterans respect obviously is a pretty pretty high pretty high high level perk you know it's one of those perks that actually takes a pretty significant amount of time to acquire and then once you have it you then have to level up the bandits in question to the particular level that you need them to be and then they can eventually become you know whatever it is and in my case that would be fian champions of course because the main reason why I wanted to do that, which is, which then leads into this next thing, is that I have Distinguished Service installed. And Distinguished Service, of course, is the mod that allows you to promote units into companions. And I was very much hoping to do that. Now, the main reason why, obviously, it's not working right now is because, as far as I am aware... I don't think you can promote lower tier units. Am I am I correct in thinking that? Because as far as I can tell, that is actually how it is. Uh, because from my perspective, I've been running around this entire time. We've had, I don't know, 14 episodes of this series so far. And I have not had one unit level up into a companion. So I'm, I'm assuming that the only time that you can actually level up people with Distinguished Service into a companion would be when they reach max level. And in the case of the Forest Bandit, of course, that's not possible until Veterans Respect is gained. So that was the main reason and thinking behind the whole, whole you know, deal about why I wanted to level up leadership, because uh, someone questioned that as well.
So I just wanted to clear that up. Anyway, uh, I, think, I think that might have been the same person that talked about the smithing, but whatever the case. You are my prisoner now. I will indeed take him prisoner. 37 prisoners, in actual fact, are also going to be joining him. Very nice. Unfortunately, we have an extremely small party now, and I'm very worried that I'm going to get picked on. So I need to be very careful here, and I also need to get rid of a couple of horses, I think. I think I have too many horses here. My herd deficit is extremely high. So yes, we're just going to get rid of a couple of horses. Uh, yeah, herd is still terrible. Okay, whoa, that, that is kind of harsh. Don't really want to get rid of all of these. Wow, yeah, massive amounts of herd problems. Okay, we'll have to get rid of some of these, I guess. Yeah, it seems like these are the main problem. Okay, that's going to have to do, unfortunately. I'm going to have to get more of them back. Can we actually make it into the hideout, though? Yeah, we can make it into the hideout. Okay, that's perfect. Can we give away these prisoners? Yes, there we go. Perfect. All right, 445. Now they are above 3,000, which is amazing, because that's exactly what I wanted to do beforehand. And then we left Batania to become a vassal somewhere else. And, uh, you know, the Forest Bandits started losing combat strength all across the board because it was just so difficult to find a, a bandit hideout close to where we were previously. But we've um, we've actually not done too badly. We're not, 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 not doing too badly, at least. Ugh. It is a little bit bad, but yes. Anyway, let's just scam a couple of people right here. And we're just going to go into the trade screen as well because I want to make sure that we have everything that we need. And we also want to get rid of some of these hogs and so on and so forth. I have a lot of wrought iron and stuff like that, so I think I might actually like to buy some hardwood here because I'm thinking maybe we'll just get rid of all of our um, all of our resources and stuff in regards to our uh, uh, in regards to our smithing gear and things like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll do something like that. Anyway, I'm just going to sell all of this. There we go. 75,000. And bear in mind, I didn't smith, okay? I didn't smith to gain that 75,000. Uh, as I've said multiple times in the past, roguery is the most powerful way that you can gain money, all right? That is literally the most powerful way you can gain money. All right, so yeah, apart from that, we're just going to sell Mr. Caladog back to his friends for 8,000. Actually, I didn't gain any money at all from that, even though it said 8,000. All right. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah, that is that is very unfortunate. Okay, so we're just going to sneak in here. Just going to wait here for some time because Corrine was right outside. She was definitely going to murder us if we, um, if we allowed her to. There we go. She's actually formed an army, surprisingly enough. All right, we might have to do a little bit of scheming. Oh, yeah. Actually, also, that's something that I wanted to mention. Apparently, there are a bunch of keybinds. There are a bunch of keybinds that I was unaware of, by the way, very much unaware of, that um, I would like to use. Um, so there is actually something that allows you to ambush people and to hide and ambush them. So what is it? Alt-F to get the scheme room. There's the scheme room. So you can literally press Alt-F. I had no idea about this, by the way. And that's where you can get schemes. And you can get your schemes to come up anytime you want. So you can go into the scheme room and boom, look at that. This guy actually lost all of his influence, which is really nice. So we can actually complete that. And then we can do it again. We can actually do other things as well. So let's actually just take a quick look here. This guy, uh, they, oh wow, they've got a lot. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's do this fellow right here. And uh, we'll try to reduce... His, uh, wait a minute, scandal, there we go, we want the scandal, 90%, yes, there we go, all right, perfect, and I also would like, if at all possible, can I select Vlandia as well? Yes, I can, oh yeah, oh right, I love it, okay, so, this is what I want to do, I want to find the guy, do you know, do you know who I'm speaking of? I think you might. All right, let me see here. Um, I, I actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I actually, uh, yeah, let me let me just get the encyclopedia. Okay, so we've got two people, right? So we've got Mr. Barakan right here. 
He's 52. All right. He might be... Uh, he's not going to be dying anytime soon, I don't think. But you never know. Anyway, we're just going to go over here to this fellow. Yes, this fellow. All right. So we're going to be going to the Day Jalind. And uh, we will be doing something about that. Hello there. All right. There he is. Let me see if I can find him. He's actually the leader, which is hilarious. Okay, so we're going to select the scheme. We're going to select murder because, oh yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, we have a 28% chance. Wow, okay, that's really, really low. Unfortunately, we don't have a significant town network here, which is the main reason why we're having some problems, I think. Because as you can see, plus 15% per territory with a clan member. You see, we don't have any clan members in these territories. So that's significantly reducing the, uh, the percentage chance for us to achieve anything here at all. So uh, even if I were to increase this, as you can see, it's 37% chance. So I don't think I'm actually going to be doing anything there, unfortunately. I would love to be able to, but we're going to leave it for now. I will be doing it in the future. Don't worry about that. I will definitely be doing it in the future. But I just can't do it right now. I just can't uh, spare the... Well, I mean, it, it's just unlikely to work. That's basically how that's going right now. Anyway, let's just increase this a little bit more. There we go. We got the gambling den almost maxed out, which is actually pretty nice. And we can otherwise... Uh, well, I kind of need to recruit some troops, to be honest. I kind of need to recruit some forest bandits, which I don't really want to do because uh, they, they're going to, they're just going to be bushwhackers, which is going to be pretty, um, well, they're not exactly the most powerful thing ever, but it's all right. We're going to have to make do with those for the moment. And, ooh, hello. We got some, we got some people here. Hello there. All right. Yeah. Actually, I would like to fight a couple of Landians if at all possible. Oh, he actually went inside. Can you believe it? Oh, uh, well, never mind. And Galtha, how are you doing? Ooh, he's got some really bad units. Yours is not oh, yes. This is absolutely perfect. All right. Yes. We're going to request that both of these bandit parties join my side. This is absolutely wonderful. We can even add these followers to my party right now as well. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. I love that functionality, by the way. That functionality is so incredibly, incredibly useful. It really is. Anyway, we're fighting in the snow. All right. Yeah. I like it. Okay. So let me see what I can do here. Mm, oh, this is a nice battlefield too. I like this. This is going to be really nice and easy for our uh, for our archers. But you've got to bear in mind, we really do not have very high level archers any further. We actually had a bunch of forest bandits. I think we had 60 plus of those guys. But unfortunately, we uh, had a lot of losses in uh, the last battle. So obviously, you know, that's really going to make a huge difference to our success going forward. If we are, un if we're, you know, not, not, that, not that careful, you know, if we're not that careful, then we're obviously going to have some problems. But otherwise, I'm just going to get out my mace, bonk a couple of people on the head. And hopefully I'll be able to get a couple of them taken prisoner. Just going to run through these guys, try to do some charge damage in the process. Because obviously charge damage does actually do a pretty good amount, surprisingly enough. Because for me, I've always said I'd like charge damage to do more. Maybe, maybe they changed it or maybe in general this horse just does more charge damage or something. But I remember thinking this horse does one damage every single time. I run through someone but nowadays they do between what five and ten or uh, between two and ten which is actually pretty good you know because if you think about it they're going you know they're, they're getting charged through by a bunch of a uh, bunch of little bits of damage and that's actually really good you know because if you just take away a little bit of their hp you're then going to have the upside of being able to eliminate them very easily because if you eliminate them with you know something that does 100 damage and most units are going to have 100 hp unless they have some kind of perk that increases their hp or their base value because their base value is always going to be 100 then it would be uh, advantageous to just charge through them once because then they're going to lose that hp and then you'll be able to finish them off because there's been many a time where i have had 
a hit of 97 or 98 and the person in question has stayed alive yeah they just stayed alive because of course they did you know of course they're going to stay alive if i do 98 damage because they're not going to you know they're not going to get knocked unconscious or anything like that so it really makes a huge difference anyway there we go we're going to be just taking all of this and i think i actually need to sell my gear to be honest i think i need to sell a lot of loot right now so let's just go very quickly over to uh sargot right here Hopefully I'm not going to get attacked. I was a bit worried there for a second because I saw that a Morcon was actually inside here. I think, yes, he is still inside here. So I'm very, very pleased that he actually didn't do anything. So, yes, anyway, uh, we're just going to sell a bunch of stuff here. So I'm just going to sell this, sell this, and then we can actually sell some of this stuff as well. Technically, we don't even need smithing anymore. You know, we don't even need to do that. But I guess... If I smelt it, we could gain some parts and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that's really if that's really necessary at the moment. So instead, I'm just going to go over here and sell some of this grain because this is the main reason why we're actually having some problems with our with our weight. Uh, fish as well is also giving us some problems. Olives and so on and so forth. We've got some really really nice foodstuffs here though, and uh, yeah, as you can see, it's actually doing a lot better let me just get some mules here just got to make sure that we're not going too hard on the whole herding thing and there we go all right not too bad and we're still gaining twenty-eight thousand right there as well which is pretty nice all right so yeah apart from that we've already checked to see whether we can murder the guy technically we can murder him but i'm going to need to start encroaching in these areas so how do i uh do i not have someone that is actually present here apparently i don't that's really interesting i actually thought that i had someone here which is very strange common friend there we go yes perfect and your gang leader needs weapons what do you need sir what do you need tell me what you need what sort of tools what 56 one-handed axes 56 of them are you serious it sure okay 56 one-handed axe why why does he need 56 of them i have no idea all right that's that's real weird okay well uh let me see i've got 41 here oh no never mind i can easily get this okay we'll just buy hatchets and all that other stuff there we go all right so we have enough to give him now uh here's your cargo there we go all right that was super easy wasn't it yeah that was a lot easier than anticipated i thought to myself 56 that's a weird number but there you go all right so we have 26 with him now and technically what i could do is i'm actually going to demonstrate something that people told me about i really appreciate this by the way any single time someone from the community tells me something that is really really helpful and i i didn't even know this before i very much appreciate it just know that just know that your kindness kindness is really very um you know inspires gratitude from me so very much appreciate that anyway i'm not going to ransom the prisoners right now but yes this is the thing that i wanted to talk about you go into the tavern right here I'm your and then you can basically say gather all my companions and then as far as i'm aware when you go outside you have all the uh, you have all the companions i this is the first time i'm trying it so let's actually just have a quick look and see whether that is indeed the case okay we got yagada here uh all of you can stop following me yeah i do indeed have my companions here as you can see i have dareem where is the where is the, where is where is shala is he not here okay so apparently shala can't join us i don't know why he's not not with us but anyway um I've actually forgotten which area is the one that is owned by the other guy now. Is it? It's the back street, isn't it? Yes, I think it's the back street. I just almost killed myself. Oh, hello there. Okay, we're getting killed by the guards. Oh, Yagata yeah, actually leveled up. Fantastic. Okay. Um. Oh, this is... Okay, this is interesting. This is not something that I anticipated. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh dear. Okay. I did not... Your duel has not ended yet. Oh, okay. I did not anticipate this. I did not anticipate this at all. Alright, so I literally got myself taken prisoner, which is actually not even bad, uh, amusingly enough, because they don't actually take anything from me as far as I'm aware, right? 
I mean, if they do, then they do. But, you know, that's actually really interesting because I was actually trying to show you something cool and then boom, <laughs> that kind of thing always happens to me. Ah, well, please give me the offer now. Come on, give me the offer. I'm going to pay whatever it, whatever it takes to get me out of here, just like real life. Anyway, <laughs> oh, let's not go there. Anyway, uh, let's have a look. Come on now. G g give me the offer. G give me the offer. Come on. Are you serious right here? Are you serious that it's taking me this long to break out of jail? That is super weird. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, we're going to go for uh, Headhunter here because 50% more damage with headshots. That sounds like a fun idea. And otherwise, well, what do we want to go for? What do we want to go for? We want to go for one-handed or pole arms. I guess pole arms probably the way to go. So... Yeah, or we could go for athletics. Athletics is always fun because I'm able to move faster, endurance attribute and vigor attribute, as well as a potential... Well, eh, you know what? We're going to go for athletics. I think that seems like a good idea because we can get potentially, uh, you know, control or um, endurance or vigor or any of those in the future tiers. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Anyway, I'm surprised that I'm not getting any offers to be released it kind of worries me a little bit all things considered i'm a little bit surprised that this is happening so not sure what i can really take away from this it's been five days i actually wonder whether this is even am i i mean i'd like to be able to um oh maybe it's because of my criminal my, i mean my criminal rating isn't even that oh there we go you find a chance to break free and escape from the settlement oh okay well, as you can see, I lost basically nothing from that. I, I just lost a bunch of time. I still have my prisoners. Hilariously, I still, I still have in Galtha. I still have in Galtha in my prisoners' hold. That is absolutely hilarious. Did I lose any of my gear? Did they take my? Uh, no, no, they didn't take any of my smithing stuff. They, uh, I think they took some of my weapons. They took some of my weapons, but I have all of my, my horses and all that wonderful stuff, so that's actually perfectly fine. I would like to find some um, Sea Raider hideouts. I would like to find some Sea Raider hideouts, if at all possible. That would be extremely useful for us, because I wouldn't mind having a couple of infantry to stand in front of our forest bandits. That would make a huge difference to our survivability. So I'm actually going to go over here and see whether we can find some, because pretty sure there's going to be one over here. There should be, at least. Usually there is, but maybe... Maybe I'm going to get unlucky. Maybe around here? Around the coast? Yeah, there we go. There it is. Fantastic. Absolutely perfect. Okay, so make peace with Batania. Uh, yeah, our kingdom will receive tribute. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I'm obviously not voting on this, but making peace with Batania is perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, because they're losing super, super hard, which is actually really good. Anyway, we're just going to give away some prisoners here, and we're just going to increase our strength with the sea raiders by 520 which is really nice and as you can see my criminal rating in vlandia is 75 because we try to break into that town yeah okay now i know the reason why we didn't go in there beforehand because we just got absolutely murdered technically you can actually um disguise yourself as a guard and i think that actually reduces the chances of you being seen or something like that i'm actually not entirely sure let's actually just take a quick look at that in praven here can i why did i go right by the front gate that was kind of weird anyway let's go straight on in so you can see here uh if i go disguise yourself as a guard yeah look at this there are flat flat cakes that can provide you with the real equipment of the town's guard you can borrow it for ten thousand. so technically i can then get in um, but this is the person that I actually want to attack, which is really funny. Incite a rebellion? <gasps> we can incite a rebellion. Maybe we should do that in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.